Happy New Year! This hairpiece was put on the 30th of December, it's now the 6th of January. Uh, I've got severe dandruff scratching that and then I'm, I'm scratching in here and finding scabs. This is because I haven't really had many showers, I've been sweating because of the summertime. But um, all through here, I can actually see some redness. And it's here and around the back, but not here. Not here where I shave my shave zone and put glue on. There's no chance to happen there. I'm not sure if this is suffocating out any bacteria or anything and they're crawling away to the rest of my head. But I can tell you this, I wouldn't wear a shower cap if I had a shower. I'm gonna have a shower. Because I stink. And because of that. Now let's examine this horizontal velo arse end. There are two problems with the arse end of the hairpiece, which I've cut out from a stock piece to save money. One is, because of the way it's brushed and domed, the front, let me just say that's the front there, the front of the hairpiece has nose to spine stitching, in the case of Polly, and at the back here, that ain't give a fuck out. Don't just fucking saw it sideways in all directions, which is what I'm wearing. The back half, back here, I've cut that out and I've stuck that on my head. So I've got the problem of the horizontal V loops and all the different directions sewing. Then I've got the problem of back here, because of the dome, this hair's been designed to brush there, and then in the center, change all directions, be sort of a circle of, like, you know, how the hair at the, the crown goes sort of in all directions on a lot of people's heads. Uh, yeah, that's this bit. <laughs> that's right here. So that's tufting up. And I had an extra overhang here that I very carefully but failingly cut without leaving a gap, I hope. Um, but it still kind of feels like it needs to be lifted and stretched down. Even if I did that though, the hairs are still going to be tufting up as if they're part of a crown and want to go in all directions. As you can see here, if I cut that short, it'll just be shorter and sticking up. This is my natural hair length here, and this is the length of the hairpiece where it meets. They kind of match, right? I didn't ever do any measurements. I just sort of felt it when I was cutting my hair when I put this hairpiece on. So I've got this head that goes like that and then goes conk bump, right? You don't want the conk bump. You do not want the conk bump. The conk bump. Would you spell it K-U-N-K or K-O-O-N-K? I'd say conk, but conks, I'd say with a U. But it sounds, seems like that onomatopoeia would be pronounced kunk. No, I think it would be conk. I don't know, what do you think? Conk looks better, especially in Indiana Jones writing with an exclamation mark. I'm talking about cartoon sound effect writing. Like schlep, like when somebody pulls out a sword or something in a Batman comic. <sighs> Automatopaya. They must have a lot of fun with that in the comic books. But those artists are amazing. I really can't get my head around how good they are at drawing. So this is all fucked up. That's one good thing humans can excel at, really. Art, art. When it's photorealistic, I'm very, very impressed. Abstract is like splat paint. It's like, yes, yes, I've sold it for $20 million. Fuck that shit. My niece who's six can do better. Not better, the same. No, no, she can do better. She's pretty good now, six, she's good. Um, yeah. Colour matching, can't tell in this lighting. I've been out and about with it during the Christmas and New Year's kind of festivities, and which were just with family, because I haven't got any friends. <laughs> no, I have some friends online, online, where I can play games and stuff. Who well, I know in real life, but they're in a different city. Because so I moved cities from Sydney to Melbourne, and I knew people in Sydney, even though I grew up in Melbourne, but I lost touch with all the Melbourne people. I have seen a couple of them, but not very often. All of them are married. 
So, what am I gonna do about that? I'm gonna have a shower for a start because I want to attack this with this. I might actually leave this in my hair for several minutes, get out of the shower, go and watch the news or something. There's some senatorial election in the United States in Georgia today. Let's have a look at this for a second. Apparently we'll decide whether or not Biden's bills are passed over the next four years because the Republicans, even if it is in the people's best interests, the changes that are put forward, they may block them to show at the end that that presidency and that political party, the Democrats, are not efficient in doing their jobs properly because they assume that people don't know about, you know, whatever the Senate does, which is basically, I think, decide on whether or not a bill can be passed. A bill being a new law. For example, if they wanted to rejoin the Paris Climate uh, Treaty, or whatever it's called, that could be something that the Republicans can prevent from happening. Australia and America are apparently very, very bad at keeping up with the rest of the world, the Western world at least, in terms of pulling our weight, trying to make <sighs> nature good again. Anyway, I'm gonna have a shower just to have a quick comparison of what it's like before and after the shower. This is uh, 30th, sorry, 30th first, those 30th, 31st, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, now today's the 6th. So it's basically the 8th day. I would say every 3 or 4 days you're supposed to do a hairline touch up. I haven't done any. And it is lifting. It's probably been lifting for 3 or 4 days. But I haven't really bothered to lift it back. The glue simply deteriorates. This type of glue, acrylic glue. I don't know any glues that really don't deteriorate. Um, having a shower with this is not going to make it better, that's for sure. So I might as well clean this up now. There's a little Auschwitz tag showing it as a back end of a hairpiece right there, see? This is not recommended to wear the back end of a hairpiece, but my custom orders were ordered in June. It's now January and only two out of four of them arrived. Both of them, well, one of them was the custom piece exactly as I ordered it. No complaints there except for the fact that the density was way too thin. It lasted for three and a half weeks and all the V-lips slipped out because it was too weakly made. So that was a bit of a fail. It was nose to spine all the way along. It was the right dimensions, 30, 30 by 15 centimeters, but it failed. I do have a few extra of those cutouts left, I think, because I was able to get, I think, three hairpiece cutouts with my stencil size from that custom rectangle, which is how I think partials should be sold so that anyone can make a partial by cutting it out to their exact stencil size. Second one was uh, French lace, which I've learned is extremely difficult to get right at the front hairline. Poly is much easier, obviously. Poly matches your skin better than lace does, but lace does look better on day one. But if it's a good poly piece, they look about the same. And then all the other days that you wear it, poly wins. So, get a good poly piece. With all nose to spine hairs, 
medium density, not medium light density. And it should be the best piece possible. The glue, obviously, is still terrible at this point in history. There's no glue on the market, except potentially derma, derma bond. Somebody needs to make a video about using that. I haven't got the money to experiment with that tiny whale for $118. But people in America can get it for nine or 20 bucks or something per vial. It should do the front hairline, that vial, at least. If not the entire hairpiece one time, but probably very, very thin. Derma bond is designed as surgical glue for replacing stitches. Or maybe if it's a small enough cut, then the bond is okay, but maybe bigger wounds need stitches on there. So I probably won't glue this down until after I've had a shower, just so that there's an extra chance of having a bit more cleaning. Not that I'll really scrub up in here because I don't want to lift it. How long this is taking in real time? how long it's actually taking to clean the front hairline of a poly piece. Doing this in lace, of course, would be absolutely impossible. Picking it off might be partially okay, but of course you'd still be left with chunks. The attachment to the head has given me a lot of leverage and strength to just pull down on the edges and go across like that and everything else I need to do to wipe off this glue with a baby wipe. So I recommend this method if you're cleaning the front hairline of a poly piece. I just decided. No C22, he was used. Be careful scrubbing there, that'll give you redness and abrasions if you do it over too much time. And then you'll wonder, what is it, the glue? Was it something else? No, it was this, it was this cloth. Doing that back and forward will give you the redness that, and irritation that people complain about. I would say 99% of irritation complaints in relation to hair pieces are from the scrubbing of the scalp with a cloth. So just be careful. Touch yourself gently. Right, that's 90% clean, I'd say. And then when I come out of the shower, I'll glue more on. For those of you who don't understand why I don't take the whole thing off and, and clean the entire thing, it's because it's too time consuming. There's enough contact back there that it's not going to peel back. But here, with a lot of leverage, it peels back. And you do not want to be doing what I'm doing and having that Auschwitz tag on the back. It's just that I can get two partials out of one hairpiece. For example, if I just use the front half of those hairpieces that I buy, let's say it's 200 bucks or 250 bucks or whatever it is, I'd have to use the front half and throw about that much away. That's a waste. I can cut a whole hairpiece out of it. Not a good hairpiece, but a hairpiece. So I'm not fucking walking around like that guy from Deep Space Nine, 
who's got hair back here, but none here. That's how I look when I haven't got a hairpiece on, as you know. Shower. <laughs> While I was in the shower, I invented the teenager. <clears throat> Basically, you shave your face clean, shaven all over, but you only beard trim the lip, the teenager. Also known as the pubescent boy. I'm gonna claim all the names so nobody else bastardizes. Bastardizes my idea. Not that I can imagine it would be the most captivating of facial styles. Maybe it just looks like I'm shaved properly. Look at the way it's sticking up like that. It just wants to be different, doesn't it? That's not what my natural hair is doing. With a hairstyle like this, to shave this less than one and a half inches long, you're just asking for trouble. Most hair pieces you couldn't cut less than one and a half inches long because all the hairs will stick up. But this one could be six feet long and would still stick up. You've really got to force this down. Oops. Much fresher. So, what I should do here, because we did the experiment last time with the uh, hairpiece that was custom made. This one, I'm gonna brush my hair. It's wet as well, by the way, with this hairpiece here this hairbrush here. As far as I can see, there are no evident hairs in that brush. Let's see what happens if I brush it in a few directions. There's that fucking hole. Anyway, I haven't noticed it. The hairs, do you think? No hairs have come out. The V-loops are too strong. So it's made using a different method. Now, as you can see from the shower, the plastic's gone white. I don't know why this stuff turns white in water and never have I gone swimming in it. So be careful if you're the guinea pig that's gonna go swimming in a poly hairpiece. It could be a pain. It doesn't happen when I just sweat. It's just shower. Now my forehead is sweating too much in this room right now. So I do have to go and cool off. I seem to sweat after a shower. I can go and cool down and then I will apply the glue. Oh, wait a second. I don't have to worry about that. I'll be gluing, I'll be pasting the glue directly onto the poly so it doesn't matter. Right, so whereas before the shower, I said I thought I'd taken off 90% of glue, it's still sticky with glue here. And a little bit, a few splotches. Glue bloat, sorry, water bloats glue, so a shower is going to bloat whatever leftover glue there is there. But I don't care there's a bit of glue there. Every three to four days I need to wipe it down and do it again anyway. Better to remove the old glue, mostly, like I just did. Now, something else I've got to consider. This was the glue that was absolutely immovable, just too thick and gluggy. Definitely no good for the hairpiece at the front, hairline. But apart from that, I've got three other vials of glue like this and one more ultra hold. So I'd consider that to be running out of stock. And I need to buy some more. Now I did get a massive Christmas present of $500, $500. Then I had to go and visit my mum three hours away that was about a petrol tank with fuel. That was about $110 with a fuel, petrol. 
I don't know, but maybe 80 litres. And then uh, they asked me if I could bring some beers up. They needed a case of Krona, a case of uh, Bogues Premium. So that was another 100 bucks, I guess, for those two cases, 24 bottles in each case. Plus a cask of wine for 20 bucks. Then, uh, yeah, they said, can you bring some fruit for a fruit platter? So I went nuts and bought uh, pineapples and watermelons and grapes and light cheese and weird looking finger grapes and nectarines and pawpaw and some other fruit that I've never seen before. I just bought every fruit and put it in a box thinking I've got cash. But the first thing I thought of when I got the cash, because that, that, that box of fruit, two boxes of fruit, it was for about 12 people over a five day period. So we just had fruit platters all the time. It was summer, so it was great. But yeah, 188 bucks for that. So my 500 bucks went kaputski in three days. Or well, one day, really. So, if it wasn't for that $500, I guess I'd be $500 out of pocket buying all that stuff. Or I would have been more of a Scrooge when it came to buying stuff for everyone. But that's how quickly $500 goes away. Bye-bye. Then again, all the people who, you know, put in all the food and everything for Christmas and everything. I brought some avocados and made some guacamole, but that's about it. Avocado is about $3.80 each at the moment. That's fucked. So I got the I got the little ones, a bag of five of them for about eight bucks instead. Not good Hass avocados or anything. Such are the prices in Australia. Five hundred dollars a day to live here. So I'll wait 15 minutes for more. It's currently 12.30 p.m. And I will be back. Maybe I'll play a game of Risk or practice playing another game of uh, Age of Empires 2 by myself in preparation to crush my friends online. I'll consider shortening those, not only lengthwise but depth wise as well but I always regret it because when that goes in I, I want to get rid of some of this and then that has to grow back it's just that this sort of fuzziness is beard materials beard hairs different from these softer ones and they annoy me I could shave all the way up to there but that would look fucking ridiculous at the moment it's like a semi beard you know it gives that framing but I can tell you you, you really make yourself look younger when you flatten these down to conform to the face a bit more. I don't feel like that's a major concern for me to look younger. I don't necessarily want to look younger. <sighs> yeah, just, just doing that, you can see taking out some of that bulk, but then when you look at it side on, it's not the same color, it's see-through and all sorts of stuff. There is dandruff scabs happening here, and by the way, my hair really stung. Not well, my hair didn't sting, my head stung all around the back here. But as you can see here, clean as a whistle. There is no trouble ever with um, dandruff where you shave all the time. You've just basically ruined the chances of dandruff developing, really. If you do have dandruff, please let me know in the comments. I'm talking about if you have dandruff in your shave zone. And you're actually shaving over, uh, what do you call it, alopecia? I think that's what I've got. Or eczema or something in my head. And washing it, washing my head, I think kills a lot of the creatures that are causing it or something. Anyway, alopecia. It's all right. I am pretty tired after being awake for a long time and... 
I had some sleep last night, but not a lot compared to the amount of days I was awake. It's like four hours sleep, then 50 hours awake, and then seven hours sleep, then, I don't know, 40 hours awake. I'm awake for days at a time, often, every week. Uh, so I just sit in a chair and feel like shit all the time. Today I forced myself, as part of my New Year's resolution, to go for a walk. About, I don't know, at least 20 minutes. So hopefully over time, even if I don't lose weight, I, I ate some chocolate biscuits afterwards because I just got home delivery of supermarket stuff. Um, Hopefully over time my core will at least strengthen. I'll feel energized to get out of a chair and I don't know, maybe I do need to worry about sleep a bit more as well. Anyway, look at how white that is. That could be potentially because that was wet when I put it on. I have no doubt whatsoever that that will dry clear. But it's interesting to see that the whiteness of the hair of the base has gone away, as you can see there, but the glue itself has gone white, which means it's probably absorbed some of the water that was in there. That's probably not a good thing. You can imagine that's what happens when you sweat, the glue is absorbing moisture a lot. I, I could just sit here for another three hours and it would probably just go clear like that. But I also feel if I put it down on my head, it would also evaporate out through the gaps. And also as I determined, on a previous occasion with that moisture coming through the hairpiece itself, I think that 0.03 millimeter poly material is in fact porous. A little bit, not much, it is plastic, but I think there must be some kind of holes in it. And even if there were not originally holes, the stitching process may have put holes in it. But I think the stitching process goes through one part of it. So let's say 0.15 millimeter thick poly and they slam or paste down a layer of very thin maybe equally 0 0.015 uh, millimeter thick plastic over the top of that see the horizontal v lips there you can also see while it's wet the uh the ashwitz tag as well not incredibly clearly though luckily given the Density. So these hairs here are going this way and these hairs here are going this way. Horizontal, no, it's just fine. Makes no sense. They were lazy. <laughs> Didn't care. It's the back half of the hairpiece and they just do not have probably a sense of quality control or they don't understand that it could be used as a partial because custom partials do not exist as stock pieces. So that's done. My hair's already cut from a previous occasion. All that's left to do is style it. This should last me for another three or four days before I have to redo the front hairline with fresh glue using exactly the method I just showed you. Obviously, I'm not going to walk around like this. I'm not going to walk around at all. I've been for a walk. That's my walk. I'm not going to walk anymore. I do get the feeling that that irritation on my scalp and everything may have had something to do with the gunk up of things like this that are in my hair. Because every single day, really, I put stuff in my hair. Potentially, since I'm not going out or being seen by anybody, I could afford to simply style it without any product. Obviously, I won't be styling it back because it is horizontal v loops and it's gonna look like shit, no matter what any brush back look. Um, It's just me at home. Why do I care at all? Just it makes me feel fresher, better. It's part of my showering process. If you brush your teeth, you might as well do your hair piece. But you brush your teeth every day. You only do this once every three to five days. Now I make it look like an ordeal because I spend a lot of time explaining it to you, but rubbing that off and then applying new glue and that sort of thing should only take, uh, I don't know, 15, well, it's just an exaggerate here. 20, it should take 20 minutes every four days. 
if you want nice, fresh, firm hold at all times. I wish there was better glue, but that's the way it is. Every three to five days, you have to, if you want a nice firm hold at the front. The rest, as I've said, has so much contact, it's not likely to lift, there's no leverage point. Um, but the glue will deteriorate from heat and body sweat every three to five days. So you have to swap that out, whether it's lace or poly. But you can go for a week, but you won't be able to pull back on it at all. In my case, I wouldn't pull it back on it because it just looks like shit, because it is, in fact, the RC of the airpiece. Horizontal V-loops and badly sewn in. So, with water, for the sake of not getting any kind of uh, exacerbation of this alopecia that I've got going on here, this eczema or whatever it is, dandruff, but scabby dandruff, Maybe I should just refrain from uh, suffocating my scalp back here. Given that this is always suffocating the scalp, it's not the suffocation that's actually causing it. But there's something in this that maybe the bacteria enjoy eating and they eat a bit of my head at the same time and lay eggs in my fucking head. Don't know what's going on. Anyway, I'm not going to put anything in my hair at all, except... You know what I'll do? I was thinking about this one, but I was thinking that goes deep into the scalp and it could cause irritation on those uh, scab wounds. What I'll do instead, I'll just use this leading conditioner because I love the smell of it. The smell of this is like a garden of Eden. That's what it smells like. It's amazing. They're not paying me to say this, by the way. I just love the smell of this thing. It has no hold whatsoever. But it probably does have some kind of, I rarely use it, so this isn't the cause of the alopecia. I think it would have some effect on softening the hair, I suppose. Some buffing starting to grow back here. Greys and oranges as they grow there. Okay, now let's, let's experiment with making the sideburns shorter, just to see what it looks like. Six centimeters, six millimeters. A centimeter is 10 centimeters. Six millimeters is just over half a centimeter. Might be a good length for that, I'm not sure. I'll try it. Six, let's go. I don't want to go deep in there because then I fuck it up. Watch. See my face now? I'll do this. Just get rid of some of that buff. It actually kind of looks better when it's got a bit of leaf to it. But it annoys me a bit. And now, I realized I want it shorter. Bottom of the nub, let's try that. It's just above the nub. That one's higher than that one. Maybe a bit higher. This is zero, by the way. This actually has a tiny adjuster, which you have to use two hands, like a lift. You press in that one, and then, but you can't do three hands, or just, because if you put your finger on that, that slides off. See, that bit, is, you can only push it down, you can't push it up, because they didn't think it through. It's fucking stupid. All right. Uh, with in terms of um, Star Trek, they shaved in they shaved that bit out so it was a spike. And sometimes these days people go around in there like that. So I don't have that. You can't have that hairline. Let's soften that by covering it all up. 
but even that looks fake. Yeah, that could slightly be realistic, I suppose, if it was covered like that. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what it's like narrowed. I'm gonna narrow it, which is. Narrowed. I think my face is too haggard and old to pull off this look, even though I am, I have got the teenager or the pubescent boy moustache. So I don't think it's a great look. By the way, I am aware as an actor, from all the times I've seen myself on camera, etc., that my right hand side of my face looks better than my left hand side of my face. Right, good, left, bad. Middle, average. Yeah, I'm not great, I'm not extremely happy with that style. Those side moons. Look, it's just basically <laughs> that is following that and that. It's just too many lines. Getting rid of that and that would totally take my face back to what I consider it to be as it was before my face started sagging. But I really don't like that fat face I get from smiling, so I avoid smiling. <sighs> yeah, no, I wish I had the sideburns back. Okay, come back. No, can't. Too short. All right, failed. Anyway, that'll grow back with my stubble. And when I shave, I'll just stop it where I go. I feel like sideburns suit me better than this. All right, that's the end of the story. I will not be putting hair product in my hair because I'm just at home with myself and I want to heal this alopecia stuff. See ya.